Hello, and welcome to episode 24 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the Bantha Rider along with the Tusken Raiders from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. The Bantha may seem like an intimidating figure to paint, but I hope to be able to show you that we can achieve great results with a handful of basic techniques. Let's take a look at the painting stages. In the preparation stage, we're going to glue the tail on and smooth the gap over with some green stuff before priming the miniature. We're then going to paint on the base colours before highlighting the fur in several layers. We'll then apply three separate washes of varying strength to produce a nice level of contrast, followed with some highlights for the non-fur areas, after which we can glue on the rider and the head. We can then finish the model off by painting the base, and I'll be creating a cracked earth effect for mine, and providing some optional dust effects for the bantha. Let's begin. After removing mould lines, which is quite a job, especially on the horns, we need to make a decision about the best order in which to assemble and paint the miniature. For the bantha, it makes sense to paint the head separately, to allow much easier access to some otherwise hard to reach places. I am however going to glue the tail on, as doing so doesn't make the painting any more difficult. But, more importantly, it allows us to fill the visible gap where the tail joins the body, with some green stuff. After thoroughly mixing the green stuff, I'm laying down a thin strip along the join, and pressing it in with a sculpting tool. I will occasionally wet the tool and my fingers to prevent the green stuff from sticking to them. I'm then scraping off the excess green stuff, leaving a nice seamless join. After leaving the model for a good few hours, or overnight, we're ready for the priming. I've chosen to prime the bantha in grey, but you could use black or white if you wish. For ease of handling whilst I spray, I'm going to simply dry fit the rider to the beast, which just means fitting him in place without any glue. For priming and painting the head, I found that an average sized pencil fits very nicely into the hollow at the back, allowing us to minimise our handling whilst working on the piece. After priming the miniature, you may well spot mould lines that you missed earlier. Just remember, it's never too late to remove a mould line, even if we remove some of the primed surface in the process. Once done, we're ready to begin painting. We're now going to begin laying down the base colours, and I'm starting with some Screaming Skull. Whilst painting the rider, I'm going to simply mount him to a pot using some white tack. And I'm going to dry fit or white tack the bantha to his base for now. I'm applying the Screaming Skull to the lower garment on the Tuscan Raider, and also to the arm wraps. In choosing colours for the Tuscan Raider, I have tried to remain faithful to the original designs, but also tried to break the miniature up a little by alternating contrasting lighter and darker shades of beige. You may of course paint your regular standing Tuscan Raider with the same scheme, and I'll be painting mine interchangeably throughout the tutorial. I'm also using Screaming Skull for the cloth we can see draped over the Bantha. You may like to introduce some more vibrant colours here if you wish. Red, blue or green even would be a nice way of varying the colour palette, and making the model a bit less monochromatic. However, I've chosen to stick closer to the dusty, brown dominated palette we can see in the original movies. Next, I'm going to use some Carrick Stone for the rider's upper garment. I'm also using this for the leg wraps. I'm now going to switch back to the bantha and paint the ropes which appear a very dark brown in the movies, so I'll be using some dryad bark, although most shades of dark brown would be fine. We 
We can also paint the feet with this. I'm now going to paint the rider's pouch strap with some Mornfang Brown. And I'm painting the remaining straps along with the face mask with some Rhinox hide. I'm also going to use this for part of the cycler rifle, as well as the gaffy stick. I'm now going to paint some of the metallic elements with some lead belcher. This means the metal hoops we can see on the bantha. as well as the metal detailing found on the rider's headgear. I'm also using this for the barrel of the rifle and the end of the gaffy stick. For the top end of the gaffy stick, I'm going to mix in a roughly equal quantity of black to produce a darker metallic tone. Finally, for the Tuscan Raider, we can use some Talon sand for the rest of the headgear, along with the gloves. I'm also going to paint the large sack hanging from the bantha with this. Now for the remaining parts of the Bantha. I've chosen to use Storm Vermin Fur for the rolled up bundle of cloth on his back. For the main throw on the Bantha's back, I've chosen XV88. You might notice that I've white tacked the bantha to a can of dull coat for ease of handling. And I've chosen to reuse some talon sand for the bunched up fabric on the very top. For the nails, I've chosen to use a mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Carrick Stone. And for the fur itself, I'm using Rhinox Hide. I'm also painting the inside of the mouth with this for now. Finally, I'm painting the horns with some Screaming Skull, lightened with some white. 
my plan here is to start with a nice bright base coat and then rely mostly on shades to provide the contrast. With all of the base colours complete, we're ready to highlight the fur. I'm now going to build up some highlights for the fur using the following sequence of colours. I'm going to start by mixing some Rhinox Hide with some Steel Legion Drab in roughly equal parts. I'm then going to use this to simply lay down a broad area of highlight. Notice that I'm not concerned with articulating the fur at this stage. You can see that I'm covering all of the upturned areas of the bantha and stopping around the top of the leg where the form becomes more vertical and would therefore catch less light. We can then use the edge of the brush to catch the main strands of fur beneath this line. This doesn't need to be especially neat and is made easier by the fact that the strands are pretty large and well defined. This helps to begin to articulate the furry texture and also creates a rough transition from the darker area to the light. Once again, here you can see me using the edge of the brush to catch just the raised edges of the fur the lower down we go. I'm also going to go quite light for the beard area. An extra layer, especially towards the topmost parts, should be applied to ensure we have maxed out the highlight. And we'll do the same for the head by once again providing a solid patch of global highlight to the top, then using the edge of the brush to hit just the most raised edges further down the front of the face. We can then lighten the mix with some additional Steel Legion Drab. The exact proportions here aren't that important. We can now repeat the process, but ending the highlight a little further up the model. We can afford to be a little rough whilst doing this, as we'll be adding quite a heavy wash afterwards that will help to smooth things over and strengthen the definition of the texture. I'm then going to use some pure Steel Legion Drab. This will now cover a relatively small area. I'm working with a little more care around the head area. I'm now going to lighten this with some Carrick Stone. Now we just need to highlight select raised edges of the fur, focusing mostly just on the brightest parts of the figure. Hopefully you can see that this approach allows us to balance the need for some global highlighting, whilst also allowing us to nicely render the furry texture. Dry brushing the highlights is of course another option, although the finish may appear a little more rough and chalky. I'm deliberately taking things a little too bright, mindful of the fact that we'll be darkening the area down with a shade in a moment. I might even add a few final highlights with some pure Carrick Stone. Before moving on to the shades, we need to paint the mouth, and I've chosen to use some Bugman's Glow, darkened with a little Rhinox Hide. 
We can use this for the tongue as well as the lips. I'm now going to lighten this with some Carrick Stone to add a simple highlight. We will only be able to see the very tip of the tongue once the head is assembled so I'm not too concerned about creating a smooth highlight here. Now we're ready to do some shading. I'm going to begin by mixing quite a thin shade using two parts Agrax Earthshade, one part Non Oil and thinned with six parts of Medium. I'm mixing quite a large quantity of this in a spare pot to prevent it drying in between applications. But you could of course just mix what you need each time you need it. I'm then using this to shade the entire Tuscan Raider. The reason I've thinned the shade is simply to create a more subtle effect than is possible using a neat shade, especially for the paler tones on the model. We'll be applying a stronger local application to select areas that may need additional darkening afterwards and I'm now drawing off some of the excess shade to prevent it from pooling too heavily. I'm also using this on the accessories on the Bantha. As well as the horns. I'm now going to mix a stronger version of the same wash, this time using just one part medium. I'm using this heavier wash on the dark ropes on the Bantha, along with any other areas where we want a little extra depth and definition in the shadows. And we could also use this on certain parts of the Tuscan Raider, such as the pouches and the head of the gaffy stick. I might also use this to increase the contrast of the head. Finally, we're going to shade the fur, using a mix of four parts Agrax Earthshade, two parts Nulm Oil, and one part Drukii Violet. We can also cover the feet with this, as well as the entire mouth area. Once that's dry, we can see how nicely the shade integrates the layers of highlight we applied earlier, and how subtly the global highlighting still shows through. I would now like to add a second layer to select areas to deepen the tone further. This should give us a rich dark fur tone with just enough highlighting to nicely accentuate the form. We can also add some additional layers of the weaker shade to the horns to select areas to push the depth to our liking. In particular, I would like to further darken the undersides to create a more dramatic sense of contrast. This build-up of shade gives a pleasingly dirty, weathered look, ideal for the horns of the Bantha. Here you can see I'm bringing the shade gently up the sides of the horn, a 
effectively creating highlights by omission on the top. Once that's done, we're ready for the highlights. Once the shades are dry, we can see that both the Bantha and the Tuscan Raiders are already looking very good, certainly good enough to game with, and we could get away without doing any highlighting at all. If you do wish to add some highlights, I might begin with the Raider's head, and a highlight with a reapplication of the base colour, Talon Sand. We could also highlight the gloves, as well as the same coloured sections of the Bantha whilst we're at it. I would then lighten this with the addition of a little white. For the dark brown on the Raiders, we can lighten the original Rhinox hide with the addition of some XV-88. For the lightest parts of the outfit, I might apply a small highlight with some screaming skull, mostly just to the right knee. We can also gently highlight the draped fabric on the bantha with this. and I'm going to push the highlight one step further by mixing in a little white. I quite like the dynamic effect produced by this highlight on the knee. The Carrick Stone doesn't need much doing to it, but you could add a little edge definition if you like. With the Tuscan Raider pretty much complete, we can now finish off the highlights on the Bantha. I'm going to begin by highlighting the bundled cloth on the back with some of the original Storm Vermin fur. I'm then going to lighten this with a little Carrick Stone.
I'm now going to highlight the main throw with some XV88. This too can be lightened with some Carrick Stone. You could even highlight the rope with a mixture of dryad bark and carrick stone if you wish. And I'm going lighter still, mostly just for the central topmost parts of the rope. We could also use this for the fleshy part of the feet. I'm not being too neat here as I'm going to be applying a fair bit of dust effect to the feet later on. Next I'm going to lighten the lips with a mixture of Cadian flesh tone and, once again, some Carrick stone. Using the same colour to lighten multiple areas of the miniature is a nice way to provide some unity and I like the sandy tone that the Carrick Stone produces. And for the tongue, which we will only see the tip of once the head is assembled, I'm using some Bugman's Glow. Lastly, we could add a few delicate highlights to the horns, starting with some Screaming Skull. Just a few light strokes on the most prominent upturned ridges is all that's needed here. And we can take the highlights as bright as we want with the addition of some white. Once we've pushed the highlights as far as we'd like, we can go ahead and glue the parts together. And now we're ready for some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the bases, and I'm going to create a cracked desert look using Citadel's Agrellan Earth. Before we do, I might first apply a quick base coat of Steel Legion Drab, just in case there are any places where this colour might show through. We're then ready to apply the Agrellan Earth, which you can see has a smooth, thick consistency. All we do is apply the paint to the base undiluted to form a thick layer. The key thing to be aware of here is that the thicker the layer, the more pronounced the cracking will be, and if the layer is too thin, you won't see any cracking at all. I'm therefore making sure I have a good thick layer, especially on the more exposed parts of the base, but perhaps a bit less where the base will be obscured by the bantha. It may take up to an hour to dry completely, after which we can see how beautifully the baked earth effect has been realised. You may find that applying the paint too thickly can result in one or two flakes peeling off, which we can simply patch up by dabbing on some additional agrellan earth. Now we have the texture, I would like to tint the colour to better match the dried sands of Tatooine. To do that, a simple wash using an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Cassandra Yellow will do nicely. Once 
Once dry, we can paint the rim in the colour of your choosing. And we now have the perfect base for our desert dwelling sand people. Before gluing the bantha down however, I'm going to first apply some dusty weathering. For this I'm going to mix some steel legion drab with some zamisi desert. Then with a small flat brush I'm going to use a combination of stippling and dry brushing to apply the effect. I'm working this all around the feet as well as the bottom of the tail. We can see how this helps to integrate the bantha with the base we've provided. My next finishing touch is to paint the small spikes on the headgear with some lead belcher. We could also provide a simple highlight for the rifle with this. I've also chosen to give the horns some additional shading, this time using the same mix that we used for the fur, thinned with several drops of water. I might even mix in a little Drakenhof Nightshade to cool the tone slightly. And now we can provide a protective matte spray and we can glue the bantha to the base. And finally, I've chosen to apply a thinned gloss varnish to the horns. This can also be applied to the tongue as well. And this completes the bantha rider and Tuscan raiders. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, do please subscribe to the channel and feel free to follow what I'm up to on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or at sarastro.com. My special thanks as always go out to the amazing patrons who are enabling me to create these videos. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!